Hey guys and welcome back to Skilling. Have you ever opened the drawer in your shelf and realized how smoothly it opens and closes? Well, it's the same reason why washing machines work and ceiling fans run so smoothly. Ball bearings. If I take this piece of cardboard and try to run it on, try to move it on the desk, then I realize that there's a lot of resistance and it's a little hard to move. But if I place it on this bottle of water and move it, then it's far easier to move the cardboard. But the bottle restricts the movement to only one direction. I can't move this away. This can be overcome by using a ball and this is exactly how ball bearings work because it allows movement in both directions. Ball bearings consist of two rings called the races, the spherical balls and a retainer. The spherical balls are held in place using the retainer which is placed in between the two races. The balls need to be well spaced because if they are too close they will not have the required space to spin. The retainer is made of low friction material to allow smooth movement of the balls. The two races are made of steel and have grooves which allow the balls to move. Usually the bearings have a certain amount of radial and axial clearance to allow for thermal expansion during operation. Otherwise it may lead to a failure of the bearing. There are different types of ball bearings available for different uses. But the three main types are the radial bearings, the angular contact bearings and the axial bearings. These categories are based on the direction of the load. Radial bearings are used when the load is applied perpendicular to the axis of the bearing, for example in cycles. Radial bearings can also be classified as single row bearings and double row bearings, which have two rows of balls. Usually, the number of grooves in the outer and inner races are equal to the number of rows of balls. But in self-aligning ball bearings, the inner race has two grooves but the outer race has only one. This allows the bearing to align itself to its original state when there is an unbalanced load applied to it. Angular contact bearings are used when the loads are applied both in the radial and axial direction. The grooves are cut in an oblique angle which allows the bearing to withstand higher radial and axial loads. Axial bearings are used to withstand axial forces alone. What's more interesting are the way the balls are manufactured. Believe it or not, they actually start with a single rod which is cut into smaller bits called slugs. The volume of the slug is slightly larger than the finished ball. These are then pressed into shape by smashing them between two steel dies. The die lines are then removed using a machining process. The balls are then placed in rough grooves between two iron discs. One disc rotates while the other is stationary and the friction is used to remove the die line. Further, the balls are treated to give it a smooth shiny finish. Like most pieces of technology that we use every day, ball bearings are also very very invisible and we don't realize their importance in our daily lives. I hope we were able to shed a little bit of light on it. Until the next time, stay tuned to Skilling.